I am the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney. This morning, I am announcing the filing of a felony criminal complaint against two men, Paul Flores and his father, Ruben Flores. The charge against Paul Flores is murder. It is alleged that Mr. Flores caused the death of Kristen Smart while in the commission of or attempted rape. That is first degree murder under California law. Reuben is charged with accessory after the fact to murder. The allegation against Reuben is that he helped to conceal Kristen's body after the murder was committed. It took 25 years, but now someone has been charged with the murder of Kristen Smart, and his name is Paul Flores. And this is someone who's kind of been in the middle of this whole thing for more than two decades. Um, Ted Rowland's Court TV anchor has more of the backstory of the disappearance of college student Kristen Smart. Kristen Smart was a 19-year-old college freshman at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo when she vanished in May of 1996. Last seen leaving a party with two other students, Kristen's disappearance has remained a mystery. Search warrants were executed in February at the Los Angeles County home of Paul Flores, one of the students Kristen was last seen with. His parents' home in Aurora Grande, California, and property in Washington State were also searched. Then, police returned to search Paul's home again. A statement released by the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office reads in part that investigators were looking for, quote, specific items of evidence. Kristen was pronounced legally dead in 2002, but this billboard with Kristen's face has remained a fixture on the California Central Coast since her disappearance, serving as a daily reminder of unserved justice. The distance between the last place she was seen alive and the door to her dorm building at Mirror Hall is just about 40 yards. That's the voice of Chris Lambert on his podcast, Your Own Backyard. It's a deep dive into Kristen's disappearance. The podcast has renewed interest in the case and is putting pressure on authorities to solve it. Lambert tells Court TV he believes Flores is likely responsible for Kristen's death. On the walk back to her dorm, I think that Paul Flores took her instead to either his dorm or another location, attempted to sexually assault her, and I think that she lost her life in the process. I'm Paul Flores, the defendant in Smart versus Flores, San Luis Obispo Superior Court case. Paul Flores, who's been the main suspect from the beginning, maintains his innocence. For years, the Smart family was frustrated with the local sheriff's department, but since current sheriff Ian Parkinson took over, things have changed. Ian Parkinson, it's been different. He keeps a close line of communication with the family. They have a lot more faith in him, and he's promised that he's going to bring this to a close. Besides the podcast and the new sheriff, there's also an army of Facebook supporters keeping Kristen's story alive. I think the best thing that we can do for Kristen and her family right now is what Kristen supporters like doing the very least but have gotten really, really good at is just being patient and waiting. I absolutely believe this is going to get solved. I think we've got so many eyes on this case now that... Uh, the pressure to solve this soon is higher than it's ever been. All right, tonight we're going to go back in time to 1997 and the family of Kristen Smart uh, filed a, a lawsuit against Paul Flores and as part of any civil lawsuit, there are depositions. This is a videotaped deposition. You'll see and hear Paul Flores, um, but you're not going to hear major details because remember he is still at this point the subject of an investigation even though it took 25 years for charges take a look at, at what went down i wanted to make a, a record that we had been taking the deposition of ruben flores and to accommodate uh, mr delamont and mr flores uh, time constraints we have interrupted his deposition and the reporter has now set up, so we're going to basically make a record that we interrupted Rubens by placing that record on um, the Paul Flores deposition record. Does that sound reasonable? That's correct. All right, um, uh, Mr. Dalmat, um, do you wish to um, 
place anything on the record prior to the commencement of the deposition, sir? Uh, I want to state for the record that, uh, so that it's clear as, uh, as you begin, that uh, other than confirming uh, Paul Flores' name, he does not intend to answer any questions and on my advice will invoke the Fifth Amendment on all questions. Okay. Um, my office has done some research and, uh, into this matter and it's my understanding that California law requires that privilege must be asserted as to specific questions that a blanket refusal to testify is inappropriate and illegal. Obviously, um, if the position that you will instruct your client to take is that other than answering his, uh, that his name is Paul Ruben Flores and nothing further, then we'll have a little problem here. And I think what there's uh, obviously going to be uh, some type of appropriate remedy sought. So let me uh, ask at this time that the witness be sworn. Where the testimony about to give in this matter should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Yes. Uh, would you state your full name for the record, please? Paul Ruben Flores. And what is your date of birth, sir? 10 22 76. What is your president, uh, present residence address? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Is, are you under the influence of any medication? which at this time would interfere with your ability to give clear and accurate testimony today. On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Um, I have, a, I think probably the best way to do this, uh, Mr. Delamont, I'm not trying to be disrespectful of your position. I uh, know um, of you and your reputation in our legal community. Uh, nonetheless, I believe that the position that you are taking is clearly erroneous. I believe that it uh, is a violation of the rules of civil proceedings. I know that you have done some civil work, but your instruction to your client uh, to refuse to answer even the most simple and basic question, including questions that have absolutely no tendency in fact or law to incriminate him, is, I believe, misplaced. Nonetheless, if it is your position that Mr. Flores is not going to answer questions about his employment, his uh, matriculation into Cal Poly, who his friends are, his relationship with his family members, um, things that occurred in his life prior to the um, uh, date of the disappearance of Kristen Smart, vehicles that were available to him to use, things of that sort, uh, perhaps I can cut to the chase and simply make a record as to the types of questions that I would be asked and we can just have the blanket invocation. I get your uh, position on that on the record so when I go to a reviewing court I have a clear and fair record. As I indicated he plans to answer that he will invoke the Fifth Amendment on all your questions. If you have questions to direct to my client go ahead and ask questions. Save the speeches for later. I'm going to make my record here I've been advised that he's not going to answer the questions, so let's start asking the questions. Did you report uh, your 85 Nissan truck stolen in San Diego recently? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. In May of 96, were you a student at Cal Poly? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment the United States Constitution. Uh, please provide me with the uh, employment positions that you have held since uh, you started high school. On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. How old are you? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Could you provide me with the names of the persons with whom you have discussed the uh, Kristen Smart case? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Were you arrested for uh, driving under the influence of alcohol in 1996? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment 
of the United States Constitution. Did you attend a party uh, at or near the Cal Poly campus in May of 1996? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Can you provide me with the names of persons who were present at the party um, in May of 1996, the party that immediately preceded the disappearance of Kristen Smart? On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. I'm going to cease the questioning. I believe I've made a sufficient record to go to a court and seek appropriate relief. I want the record clear that I will be seeking sanctions uh, from Mr. Delamotte, uh, from his law firm, and from Mr. Flores um, as a result of what I believe to be a bad faith uh, presentation of this witness and a wrongful assertion of the Fifth Amendment. That was 1997, now in 2021, he's been charged with murder. And of course, we're tracking that case right here on Court TV.